Now that we both have ability system components and attributes on our characters, we can start manipulating those attributes. So as a bit of a recap, what we have is a character here with an ability system component that has an attribute set set to it for basic attribute sets. We're going to probably make more attribute sets as we go along. And that's then being set through this data table to its initial value. Now, let's make something real quick, real easy, that will use up some of our mana whenever we try to attack. Because we have this Paragon character, which has some attacking built into it, right? These are not gameplay abilities. We haven't made gameplay abilities for these things yet. And in the next video, we will be replacing these with gameplay abilities. But for the time being, we're just going to keep it at playing these animations. But we're also going to be using some of our own MP. So this is the basic setup that they have in Blueprint for the Paragon characters, which is a little bit messy, but it works. So what we'll do here is after playing the attack, we will just simply decrease the mana on our character and then print out the new value. So what we'll do here is I have the attribute uh, set that we had. We were printing out the health value. Uh, now we'll get the mana value instead and we will uh, print the base value from that. If you're confused between what the base and current value difference is, I do highly recommend you watch the last video. So for testing purposes, let's just hook these three all up to our print string here. And now this is going to print out just 100 every time we try to attack because we are not yet decreasing the amount of mana we have and let's see maybe we can simply just subtract 20 from this and maybe then we can uh maybe we can set the mana no we cannot that's not how that works if you've seen the last video you would have known that's not how that works we cannot directly influence these gameplay attributes we need to do that through gameplay effects and that is where the cool shit comes in. So let's make ourselves a gameplay effect. You make those through Blueprint, finally we are here in Blueprint, right? We've done a lot of setup in C++, we can get into the exciting Blueprints. We can make a gameplay effect, and there's a couple of classes here like the gameplay effect calculation, execution calculation, custom application requirement, all that stuff we might get into in the future. For now, we simply want the gameplay effect, and we'll call that gameplay effect use mana. Anytime you want to change anything about any attribute, you're going to have to make a specific gameplay effect for it. So let's open this up and see what this looks like. Because there's no events here, there's no functions to override here. Gameplay effects are literally only just a list of instructions that you do through this UI. So this is where we move from, okay, we did a lot of very code heavy stuff in C++, but that is all to be able to use this system, which is very designer friendly because it's all happening right here inside of a UI. So we have a duration policy. This can be instant or infinite or over a certain duration. So instant just happens the moment the node that applies to the gameplay effect takes place. Whatever we put in here will take effect. We can also set something to infinite or has duration. Well, has duration is pretty straightforward. It has a duration. And this is just how long that duration lasts. So something like 50 seconds, right? And you'll note that when we set this to has duration, uh, we get the period here. And this is how often this thing will trigger itself while it is active. So if we have like a regen spell, 50 is maybe a little bit much, but a regen spell that lasts for 10 seconds and heals us every two and a half seconds. That's how that would work. You can set a gameplay effect that has a duration and then over a certain period, it will trigger itself over and over again. There's a bool here to uh, say whether or not it should apply itself immediately as well. So if you have a regen uh, spell, maybe it heals you once and then two and a half seconds later again, two and a half seconds later again, two and a half seconds later again. But maybe you don't want that because that would um, undercut your normal healing spell a little bit. So what you want to do is set this to disable so that it doesn't initially do the healing effect, only start doing it after the first two and a half second count. And then we also have infinite, which is just the same as the has duration. It does the effect on a set period, but it doesn't have an end. You have to explicitly tell this gameplay effect to end, otherwise it will just stick around forever. 
We're gonna stick with instant here because this is just using up some mana. So the moment we attack, we want to use up some mana. Here we get into uh, the modifiers or executions. Modifiers are what they sound like. They modify gameplay attributes. Executions are kind of like modifiers on steroids. So a modifier can, for instance, not take in multiple gameplay attributes to calculate something to then modify the health on your opponent. So if you have a strength stat and they have a defense stat and maybe uh, you both have like something else going on that will influence that as well, uh, a modifier won't be able to deal with that. For that, you'll need to make an execution calculation. And that's something we'll do towards the end here because that's something we need to do in C++ again. So for now, we're going to stick with modifiers. These are just the more simple executions of, hey, just add something to this attribute. Hey, just remove a bit from this attribute. Maybe multiply this attribute by something, right? So we will modify our attributes that we can choose here. And this gets us the drop down, which has all the attributes that you've made in all your attribute sets. So if a ability system components that you're trying to run this on doesn't have this attribute, it's not like your game is going to crash or anything. That's all built in protection. It just won't do anything. Uh, so for now, we're going to set the attribute set mana, and we're going to uh, choose the modifier operation adding. And you might think, but we want to subtract. There's no subtraction, because subtracting is just adding a negative number. That's just how math works. But we can multiply or divide or overwrite or invalid. I, I personally don't know what invalid would be useful for, uh, but sure. Overriding, of course, is just setting a new value directly. Dividing and multiplying, I don't think I need to explain to you. Then we get to the modifier magnitude. And this is, uh, for now, we're just going to set a scalable float of using 20 mana every time we do this. But you can also uh, do this based on a attribute. So you can say the attribute that we want to use is going to be, for instance, uh, our health for some reason so we w want to subtract the amount of health we have from our mana in this case that doesn't make a lot of sense but let's say instead what we want to do is we want to subtract the amount of strength that a certain character has from the health of another character that you can do through this attribute method because here we have the attribute source and target as well so the source will be the thing that is applying the gameplay effect. This will make a little bit more sense in a moment. If you're not following along, don't worry. Uh, but it also has a target, obviously. So in this case, we could say, hey, the source, get the strength stat from that and use that to subtract from the health of the target. And that is how you would set up a basic like combat system. You can also add values uh, pre or post multiplying, and you have this coefficient, which is the multiplier of this specific effect. So if you want to have an attack that, for instance, does twice the amount of damage uh, compared to a normal attack, you would set this to 2, of course. If you want to have something that does a negative amount, because do remember, our modifier operation isn't subtraction, it is adding. So if we want to deal damage, this has to be negative 2 or negative one. Uh, then we also have uh, custom calculation classes, which you can code in C++. Honestly, this option doesn't come up too much for me. Usually when I feel like needing to do something that requires this, it very quickly uh, goes into me needing an execution uh, class and not just a calculation class. So it's nice that this is here, we're probably not going to even bother covering it. And then we can also set by color, which we might get into in a moment as well. But this allows you to make a gameplay effect in Blueprint and set its value of what it's going to uh, need to change. So, for instance, setting the damage through Blueprint. And then you can set by color. And this requires uh, a tag to be passed in so that things can be matched up properly and stuff like that. Um... We might cover that as well because it is useful. For now, for now we're going to stick with scalable float and we're just going to subtract uh, 20. So what we want to do is we want to add negative 20. Then we have executions, which again, executions are more or less just more complicated modifiers. And we have conditional gameplay effects. 
so this can be a gameplay effect that is applied by this gameplay effect. If we have a gameplay effect that is, for instance, a burning sword attack, right? When you get hit by a burning sword, instead of that ability applying both a burn and a sword base damage, what we can do is we can make this specific gameplay effect that we can just apply once, and then this gameplay effect will deal damage once, and then also add in the burned gameplay effect onto our targets as well, which is very, very nice. Sometimes you want to use one, sometimes you want to use the other method. You have both available to you. We have a chance of applying it to the target. So if you have something like a confusion spell and it only has a 30% chance of hitting, this is where you put uh, that in. So this is just an accuracy. And there's a few more things that we can talk about here, most of which have to do with gameplay tags. I kind of want to make a video specifically about gameplay tags because at this point, I'm already probably overloading you with a lot of information. Again, if you're not following along, when we put this into practice, you're going to be fine. For now, just suffice it to say that uh, these gameplay tags, we can grant tags or check tags on the actors that we're trying to apply these things to. So for instance, we can give this asset itself a tag. Uh, we also have granted tags, which means that it will either add or remove tags on the actor that this gameplay effect is being put on. And this can be very useful because, again, if you uh, have a status condition like burns, you can just say when this gameplay effect applies, we add it to you. And when this gameplay effect is removed, it is then automatically also removed again from that actor which is very, very nice. But again, we're going to get into the whole gameplay tags a little bit more. For now, suffice it to say, there's a lot of information here that you can play with, and it is very overwhelming at first. But the wonderful thing is, because there's so much information just in drop-down menus here, you don't actually need to do much coding from this point on. You just need to navigate these menus. So now that we are back here in our blueprint, what we can do is we want to get our ability system component and we can apply gameplay effect. And here we can apply the gameplay effect to ourselves or to a target. And this is what I meant before. If we want to apply it to a target, we first, and this is just kind of badly designed uh, because the target up top here is the target for the node. So this is the thing that is executing whatever this node is. That's just the same way every other node also has a target. Like if we have uh, a destroy actor node, that also has a target, right? But then we also have the actual target of this. So this really should be called source, and this is the target. So this gameplay ability system component will be applying a gameplay effect to another gameplay ability system component. And that is where we come back to what I showed you before where if we use this attribute-based stuff, we can choose between whether or not we want to take an attribute from the source or from the target. That is where that comes in. But you can also apply gameplay effects to yourself. So apply gameplay effect to self, and that doesn't have that target in there. We only have one gameplay effect at the moment, and that is use mana. So let's connect all of these up through here, actually. And now every time I use an attack, my mana will go down by 20 and we'll print out the new amount of mana that I have. So let's test that out, shall we? This is 80, 60, 40, 20, 0, minus 20, minus 40. You might be seeing a bit of an issue here. And that is because we're just directly applying a gameplay effect to ourselves without any checks or without any anything at all, really. So this is not the ideal way to do this, but I just wanted to make a video going over all of the theory and all of the options that gameplay effects offer you and how to put them to some basic use. It's really hard to really use gameplay effects to their fullest without implementing them within a gameplay ability. And I want to make the next video more specifically about gameplay abilities without having to explain all of this mumbo jumbo that we've gone through today in here. So. Hopefully, this entire information dump hasn't fried your brain too much. If it has, I do recommend to just jump into the engine and experiment around a little bit. Listen back to this video two times, three times more if you need to. And without touching gameplay abilities yet, just play around a little bit with increasing and decreasing a stat or, well, an attribute 
on your own character just to get a bit of a feel for it next time we're going to get into a lot more of those things that we talked about before like using attributes from your enemies or from yourself on your enemies and that's where this stuff becomes really really powerful and a very big thank you to all of my patrons you can see them on screen right now if you want to help out supporting the channel there's a link down below in the description to the patreon page and a special thanks to my cave digger tier patrons, Sergey Thomas, 